Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the closet. Welcome back to the Christopher Moon channel. And uh, welcome to today's uh, topic on uh, friendship, on toxic friendships that you may be stuck in. You know, sometimes we get stuck in them. You know, how to deal with them, how to move forward, and, and how to realize, you know, what you're dealing with. It, it, it's kind of hard sometimes, especially once you're in a place where you're trying to heal. You're trying to become, you know, something a little bit better, something something different. You, you've realized that you don't like where you're at. You don't like the energy you're sitting in. You don't like the situation. And that happens to a lot of people. You know, that happens to people every year around the first of the year once they start buying gym memberships and start doing stuff. They're having a, a change of, of their mind and they're thinking, you know, I don't like how things are going, so I'm gonna do something different this year. And a lot of times, you know, we don't need to wait for that. You know, if you're in a place where, where you're just feeling gross and nasty and you're tired, of, of being in that prison of drugs or alcohol or, or bad feelings or whatever it is that you're in. There, there's a way to uh, kind of move away. And a lot of times it, it's a slow thing that you do by yourself. If you can do it with, with a friend or with a family or with somebody, that's, that's equally as good. But uh, sometimes it's hard to tell if that friend, that family member, that person, like really wants you to get out of that space, that energy, that place. And for me, once I was coming, going through addictions and coming out of addictions and struggling through, like just every moment of them, you know, you'd, you'd have friends and people and family, mostly family wants to keep you uh, healthy, safe. They want you to get off the junk. They want to have their person back. They want to have that sweet boy or girl back that they used to have and love. And then there's like friends that, you know, you, you met them while you were out there partying. Um, you do whatever. And, and once it comes time that you need to quit, they're with you the whole time. All oh, that ticket was bad. This was bad. That was bad. Everything's bad. And they got your back. Until, you know, all, all that shock and all that scary stuff's done. And, and you're in the space to where you want to move forward. You want to quit doing whatever substance. You want to you wanna better your life, your situation, your future. Now, a lot of times that friend is going to be like, yeah, yeah, no, this is great. Yeah, shit. Oh, you know what? I got this thing this weekend, though. So, like, you know, maybe you could quit drinking next, you know, the next weekend. Or, uh, or uh, there's just always something, you know. Or they can't make it to hang out anymore or whatever. But it eventually turns into you're going to hang out with them and, and they're just, you know, not feeling it. Chris, you used to be more fun. You used to be, you know, you used to be the guy. Now you just want to drink coffee. Uh, you just want to sit around and read or something like you, you, you want to go fishing on a hike. Like, like it's boring stuff to them. It, it, it's no longer, it's no longer the friend that you had. It's still the friend that you had, but but it's like when, once the new version of you comes over, Chris 2.0 point whatever, you know, and you come up and you're like, hey, let's uh, I'm having a little problem. I need to try something different. I'm not coming out drinking tonight. I'm not uh, not doing the usual, but I still want to hang out, man. You wanna you wanna go get lunch? And then, you know, sometimes you can go get lunch. Sometimes you can do these things. But you, you tend to find that uh, sometimes once you're out and you need the help, the people you surround yourself with, sometimes they, they need a little help too. And I think, like, depending on the type of person you are, you know, there, there's people that uh, I think just kind of go for what they want. 
and they're just always getting and saying and doing oblivious to what's going on around them. They, they just know what they want, they're going for it and they're oblivious. And then there's other people like myself that like are more empathetic and they want the best for the people around them, especially if they say you're your friend. You love them, you want to do the best for them. But I've noticed coming through detoxing and getting off of drugs, multiple things, cigarettes, alcohol, you know, the, the blues, the, the sabox and that stuff. It was, uh, it, it, it was hard enough as it is to, to go through that. But then once somebody hasn't seen you for a minute because you know, what, it takes 30 days to get off of this stuff. So the doctors say, but, uh, it takes a while and, and you start getting calls, you start getting people like, where are you? What's going on? Oh, hope you're doing okay. And, and if you do have a group that sticks around with you, sometimes you're trying to, you know, pull yourself out of a certain place, out of a certain energy. You're trying to pull yourself up. And, you know, a lot of times you got those friends that, you know, they're there, they care about you, they love you, and they don't know, but they, they'll latch on to you. They'll go right on to you while you're trying to get out. And, and you only have so much energy to crawl yourself out with the weight of your friends, to bring them up, to, to, to bring up their, you know, whatever issues going on. And it just tends to pull you down. And, and that's really what it is. It's like, a, like an energy vampire. There, there's levels of this toxic friendship. There, there's the ones that just want you to stay in and do the drugs and have the fun and be their buddy that they need for that party night. Th that's somebody that needs to just, you can't, you can't mess with that person until they're ready to, to be on your level now. You can't go back down to those levels and, and hope that sobriety is gonna happen. You, you need to make a new place where people are free to come and visit you but they need to know that, hey, I'm in a new place. I ain't going back there. I'm not doing that. That's in the past. But there's friends that still hold on and they're like, that's great. That's great. But they still hold on and, and they become that energy vampire. They become this, this person that's just kind of sucking, sucking out, you know, what you got. <clears throat> and I found that that makes staying sober, staying, uh, you know, on your path, you know, extremely difficult you know it, it, it's difficult once you don't feel well you feel well enough to where you, you know you don't want to drink you know you don't want to do a substance but once you got somebody that's just around and, and and they're you know they know you're going through something but they need to tell you about their problem they need your help with what's going on they're having issues with their partner. Like, like it, it, it's constant stuff that never stops. It, it, it's constant texts, phone calls, like, like stuff that, that consumes you in their life. And, and you start to notice that like, they, they need your guidance, they need your help, they need you to, to tell them what's going on. But it, it's really just, they need to vent. They need to vent and purge out all that stuff and the, the saddest part and the most draining part about it is that, you know, I'm there, I'm willing to listen. There, lots of people are. It just starts to become, you know, a drain on you once you hear the same story. She's doing what? Oh, well, you need to, you know, I would do this, I'd do that. Like, you, you give the best advice you can, and, and I give good advice. You know, I, I hope, I don't know, who knows, <laughs> but I'm sure everybody does. You're out there giving good advice to somebody. Somebody's out there giving good advice to you. Somebody gives good advice to me. Like it just all goes around, but it, it's really draining once, once you're telling somebody, oh, I hear you. I see your situation. I feel that stuff. And it, this is the way I think you could best get through it. And once, once you go and you put all that time and effort, because that's probably like a 30 minute or an hour conversation, depending on who your friends are. And once that conversation is done and 
the next day, the next couple of days, the next weekend comes and you get that call, you get that knock on the door, you get that same friend back there with the same energy. Oh shit, you know, woe is me. I went and did the same thing that I've always been doing. I didn't listen to any of your advice and I'm having the same problem. So I need you to listen to the same problem again and go through the whole thing again so I can disregard everything that you tell me. And for me, for me, I would say that these different levels of friendship, like it just took me a long time to to see and to be selfish enough for myself to say whence enough is enough. You you got you got to be selfish for yourself now. Like that's what this lifestyle is once you have become addicted to something. You, you can no longer be the, the person trying to help and trying to do everything for everybody. Now you can get to places where you can, but you, you get to places where you can and then you get pulled back into that same old uh, people start using you as a rug or people start taking advantage of you, you know, and that's not good. So you just got to realize, you know, look at your friends, look at your your family, look at everybody in your inner circle. If you're trying to do something to better yourself, better your life, better the people around you, and sometimes the people around you just won't let that happen. There's blocks every time. Um, you, you notice that like, Maybe, maybe the interest really isn't in you or your friendship. It's in, it's in like uh, the activities that you know happen. Maybe what you bring to the table. Uh, there's lots of different things. But then there's also a lot of true friends out there. there. There's a lot of true people that care and love, and they want you to do good. They feel like family. They're the ones that come over and just come into your house and look in your fridge and start helping themselves just like family they're, they're crazy but they care you know they're the ones that are going to be holding your hair back those nights that you were sick and throwing up they're the ones that were uh making sure that once you passed out that you got pulled into a car and taken someplace safe back home you know they're, they're the ones that you know were there looking out for you then and they're the ones that are looking out for you now so just make sure that your circle is filled with people that care about you and people that aren't chipping away at your energy, chipping away at your, you know, your plan for your life, you know? If you got something to, you know, to, to let them know, you got something to say, you got to you got to let them know. You got to say it. Hey, I'll come talk to you again a little bit later. You know, I'm going through some things. I gotta, I just gotta work it out. Or, you know, whatever you gotta do. But you, you can't let people just drag you down, suck your energy, and, you know, leave you feeling depleted. Because once we feel depleted, once we are stressed out, once we get to the end of the rope, and there's no more rope, on the other side of that is just addiction. It, it, it's just our weakness to go back and it just makes it easier and easier with every little stress in life, every little thing that you know, you're know you not expecting. You may not be expecting it, but those feelings get in, that stress gets in, and then what do you know? Next thing you're back, you're back doing the stuff you're trying not to do. But then, you know, maybe that's going to repair that toxic friendship and that's good. Then you guys can sit back at the bar and drink and then get some pills from old what's his name. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was getting a call and it said it was going to stop, but it didn't. Anyway, that's pretty much the gist of it. Like, just make sure that everybody in your circle is actually in your circle. Just make sure that the people that are in there aren't 
nudging you or pushing you towards that stress or that anxiety that's going to induce, you know, stepping out, induce going back to the start, induce going and, you know, getting that pill, getting that drink, getting whatever. And you know, it, it's not one. We don't do one. Who does one? Nobody does one. So don't do that because the moment you go get that one, that's going to turn into who knows. We know. But anyway, that's all I got. I love you guys. I hope you pick some winners out there. But I know you're a winner. So yeah, you have a great day.